morning or afternoon, my brothers and my sisters in the Lord. How are you today? I am just so happy that I woke up. <laughs> you know, it feels good to be alive. It feels so good to be a part of God's creation for such a time as this. I know, I love it. I love the growth. Sometimes it hurts. And sometimes we get thrown under the bus. That's the thing, you know. But sometimes things happen in our life to, to wake us up. Um, for 2017, for the new year, I am asking the Lord for discernment. And I was up until 1 o'clock in the morning praying meditating, thinking. I'm one of those people that, you know, when something happens to me, it, it, it replays in my mind for three or four hours. You know, it just replays in my mind. Like, did I say the right thing? Did I say the wrong thing? Did I have reworded something? Did I leave something out? Maybe I should have did this. You know, it, 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 it's, it's that uh, commercial. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. And uh, I forget what commercial that's from. I think it was for an auto insurance commercial that I heard. You know, if, if I had insurance, I could have, you know. Well, I don't even remember, so I'm not even going to get into it. But anyways. Without any more delays, let's thank the Lord for waking us up. Not just physically, but spiritually. Now, yesterday, I went to my Bible study class. And I really love that. I love learning about the Lord. I love how the, the teacher... Like he takes a, a couple of Bible verses, and I mean, he just he he's a digger. He's he's a deep down digger. Like he 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 not only asks us questions, but he wants us to grasp what Jesus was talking about. What Jesus meant that there were eyewitnesses, okay? People that were, that walked with Jesus, that talked with Jesus, they were eyewitnesses. I mean, you, you, you know, the Bible was written by 40 different men, okay? That's, that's what I heard. And I'm just taking that as um, the truth because I don't see how my uh, Bible study teacher could lie about that or make that up. And anyways, moving right along. Today we're going to talk about this gift of having discernment. And I am still working on it. I am so naive and so gullible, and I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, even my family, they, you know, they've got this thing about meeting somebody or just, you know, just for a couple of minutes. And I thought I would, I thought I had that gift too, you know? But I, I keep getting burned, not physically, but, you know, m mentally and spiritually. I'm like, well, wow, this hurts, you know, why? why? Why does it hurt so bad? And sometimes I hear this, this little voice saying, because you're still learning. 
You know, it's like when you're when you're a baby Christian, and I don't want to say I'm a baby Christian, but when you're still in the, uh, you know, God works on us, and He takes His time with us. And being his kids, you know, at first when your little child starts like toddler, so instead of calling myself a baby Christian, maybe I should up and go, you know, I'm a toddler Christian now. I want to be a teenage Christian. You know, I just want to, I, I want to be, I want to be better than where I'm at. But I'm clearly not where the Lord sees me at, you know, I know he's got plans for me and I'm going to start crying because I, I want to grow in the Lord, but it hurts. I know this is my snot rag. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> it's my fish. Owl. <laughs> oh, gosh. You guys, I'm sorry. I don't mean to get all emotional, but I'm just being honest. And I love sharing the truth because, you know what, the truth hurts. And not everybody you meet is going to be as genuine as you think they are. Not everybody you meet is going to be sincere as much as you want them to be. See, a lot of people put on their best faces, you know, and they just want to impress you, and they just want to, uh, you know, first impressions are lasting. So, I mean, it's like going out on a date. You want to look good. Especially if you like that person. You want to look good. Because you want to go out with them again. But then as time goes on. And and and, and you'll see. You'll understand if you've ever been through the big D. Which I haven't. And in case you don't know what that stands for. It's divorce. I've never been divorced. But it, it hurts. And especially when there's kids involved, uh, you know, it just tears both sides of the family apart. You know, that's why God doesn't like divorce. That's why Satan is just meddling, meddling. That's his job. That's Satan's job. He's just doing his job. And so I'm just doing my job. By digging into the Word of God. And you know what? When you dig into His Word, not the world's Word, not not what, you know, and just forget about other people's opinions. you got to search the Scriptures for yourself. You do. And you, and you know what? There's a verse in the Bible... And you know what I'm going to say. I don't know where it's at, but I know it's in there. You can Google it. It says, you have not because you asked not. I'm telling you, I know this. And the reason why I'm so gullible and so naive is because I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I'm nice. I, I, you know, I, when I find lizards in the laundry room, you know, I go to kiss them because I think they're cute, and they actually bite me on the mouth. You know, it scares me because they don't have sharp teeth, but I'm like, I was trying to kiss you, and you just nipped me. It, it feels like a little pinch. I've bit, I've been bit by these little Jurassic Park things like three or four times. You would think I would learn my lesson, but they're so cute. I keep thinking in my mind, oh, this one's going to kiss me back. But no, they bite, they knit, they pinch. Thank God they don't have teeth. And I, I scoop them up and I, and I pray over them. 
and I say, you're going to die in the house because there's not really that many bugs in here. You need to be outside, okay? If you want to grow, you need to be in your natural habitat. So, you know, very carefully I put them outside in the garden so they can eat the bugs. Do you guys know what I mean? That's, you know... People might think that I'm a little bit crazy, but that's the way I am. I love God's creatures, except the flies and the mosquitoes. Those are the only things, and, you know, and cockroaches. I just, you know, there's certain things of God's creatures that I don't like, and that's one of them. That's three of them right there. Mosquitoes flies, and cockroaches. They're just creepy. They are! They're creepy! Okay, anyways, without sound of <laughs> 11 minutes, and you're like, what is she talking about? Okay. Today, I'm going to just focus on brotherly love. You have to have it. You do! So, if you were to look in John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, it's going to say, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you love one to another. And that's what I try to do. That's why I'm like, well, I give everybody, I love everybody, you know, because I do. That's who I am. I've been hurt and burned and scarred and mistreated and abused and and tossed under the bus and tossed out into the curb and and just tossed into the walls. You know, I had a very I had a couple of bad abusive relationships. And you know, these guys thought they could just, you know, since I'm little, they thought they could just be macho and just throw me into the walls. And uh, I showed them, packed up my little suitcase and was like, adios amigos, you need to find another rag doll because it ain't me. How many of you know what I'm talking about? All right, moving right along. I got a message for you guys and girls. If you're in an abusive relationship, you need to get out. Seriously. You, you need to pray about it. And, 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 you know, the Lord doesn't want his kids getting beat up. Especially by a, a spouse. And I'm not saying I'm getting beat up. That's not what I'm saying. Because... My, you know, my, my SO right now, he knows. He knows my past, so he don't even go there with me. Okay, so now out of Romans chapter 12, verse 9 and 10, it says, Let love, okay, let love be without dissim dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Okay, one more because I'm not a Bible thumper. There's a message here. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling 
in him. So I just want you guys to know that without love, you're nothing. It says that. You you know, you if 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 you don't have love, you're just a clanging symbol, you know? A clanging symbol is one of those things on a drum set. I don't have a drum set, but I can pretend right now. You're just, you know, you're, 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 you're just, you're annoying without love. You know what I mean? I want to wake somebody up, so I hope this doesn't annoy anybody. Just put your little hands in your ears. I'm trying to wake you guys up, okay? There's too much hate in this world. There's too much jealousy. There's too much ego in people. There's too much negativity. There's too much gossip. There's too much negativity. Did I already say that? There's too... <laughs> and that's not what we're supposed to focus on. There's another verse in the Bible that says somewhere, you got to Google it, focus on the lovely things in this life. There's a lot of lovely, beautiful things in this life. There's butterflies, there's chirping birds, there's furry kittens, and there's little barking dogs, and there's other people that want to show love and spread love. And sometimes, you know, people that aren't used to that, they might take that the wrong way. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I know, and I'm really going through some stuff right now, spiritually speaking. I, I don't know how to accept love. Because when I was a child, I wasn't shown love. So now when people try to show me love, I don't know how to act. You know, I, it's, like, it's like, what is love? What is love? And all I can think about is Jesus hanging on that cross when he didn't have to. That's all that comes to my mind. That's all that comes to my mind is him telling his father, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We don't. You know what I mean? The devil wants to break people up. He wants friendships ruined. You know, you could you could be building a friendship right now with somebody that you admire and you respect, and all you want to do is draw closer to them because they it, it's with them that you're growing, and in comes the enemy. Oh, well, I don't know if I can trust that person. I wouldn't if I were you. You know what I mean? It's like, who are you? Who are you to, to, you know, here I find these gems along the way in my walk of life. And then the enemy creeps in. You know? Creeps in like, hey, you know, is that person really a friend? You know what I mean? Sometimes I feel like Eve in the garden surrounded by all this beauty and all of these good things that the Lord has blessed his children with. And here comes the enemy. Well, how do you know that that person is sincere? And that's why for 2017, I'm asking for discernment. Because like I said, I, I don't know what real love is. I know it I I know it comes in a lot of different forms, you know. 
and in a lot of different ways. And one thing I really love about the church that I was going to was they always had bags of food. And it was free. You know, it was free. They, they didn't charge me when I walked out the door with it. As a matter of fact, people in the church would see me grab one bag, knowing I've got four mouths to feed, knowing that I don't work, knowing that my husband doesn't work, you know. And they're like, you know, she's not greedy. She's not out to, to rob anybody or steal. And they encourage me. They're like, Donna, take two bags. You know, and I'm like, no, I'm just going to take one. This is fine. It's, you know. Now, sometimes when we get in really tight situations, I, I do. I'm like, are you sure I can take two? Are you sure? They're like, yes, that's what it's there for. And I'm like, okay, but, you know, what if there's another family? And they're like, we've got a whole pantry here. God provides for his kids, Donna. Stop feeling guilty. You know, I got a big issue with guilt. So if you could please keep that in prayer. Please. Because I struggle with that. I, I think I struggle with guilt the most. Because I've messed up so much in my life. When people show me love, I just don't know how to say thank you. I know. And here I, here I go again, crying like a baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just thank God for bringing me closer to him. I'm so thankful to God for a lot of things. And I'm so thankful to you guys out in YouTube land that support my ministry by leaving nice comments. And you can leave rude comments, too. I'm not going to judge you. As a matter of fact, sometimes when when people, you know, I mean, I think there's comments that are like, Allah is the best, you know, and it's like, I don't want that on my channel. But then, you know, the Lord's like, you know what, Donna? Allow that comment. Because there could be another Christian like me that leaves a nice comment saying, you know what? Allah Akbar didn't die for your sin. There's only one Lord and one Savior. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he was God in the flesh. Why do you think Jesus ascended up to heaven and right now is sitting on his father's right hand? He did everything he was supposed to do. When he said it finished, he accomplished what he came to this earth to do. And you'll see that in John verse 3, 17. Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that's what I'm going to end with, because that's beautiful to me. Might be saved. It's, it's our free will. It's a gift. Eternal life with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Who wouldn't want that? I, I just want to smack people around that don't get that. If you don't get that, you're not going to have that unless you what? Open your mouth and ask for it. You have not because you ask not. And, you know, before I click off and say goodbye, do you know that God says, my children perish for lack of knowledge? 
Think of the Muslims. Think of these Buddhists. Think of these Hindus worshiping a cow. Think of these Buddhist monks putting gifts and money and food, laying it, laying it down at a statue. I mean, come on! Wake, wake up, somebody out there! It's all inside your heart, and God knows who his kids are. Don't think you're fooling God. Don't think for a second that you can play church. God knows who the fakers are, and God knows who, who the real ones are. And that's why there's going to be Christians that are sitting here when Jesus comes to take the true believers up out of here when it's time. Because I just figured it out last night. When he calls us, we are instantly cremated. And that thing that burns inside is going to... We're shooting stars inside. I know! We're shooting stars! I can't wait! It sounds like an alien abduction, and I can't wait for that. I don't understand it. I, I comprehend it just a little bit, but we got to dig into the Word. Keep digging into the Word. And remember, if you don't have love, you don't have nothing but without being said and done. I gotta go. And I love you. But Jesus loves you more because he died for you. Okay? Remember that. Have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.